Well, good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. Uh, those who are here in person, as well as those who are connected with us online, uh, it is our fourth Sunday of Easter on this April 25th, and I just want to welcome all of you for, for worship. Uh, you should have uh, the bulletin uh, printed, and then uh, we will have the songs and the scripture readings on the, on the screen. Um, I will invite you to, as you are able to stand, uh, as we uh, enter into worship through the Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share with, in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, we give you risen Christ for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with a stranger. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ, cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is the Lord's, is my shepherd. You may be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with our dialogue. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, I shall not be in want. The, the Lord, Lord makes me lie down, down in green pastures, pastures and, leads and leads me beside the still waters. waters. You restore, restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways 
for your name's sake. Though I walk, walk through, through the valley, valley of the shadow of death, I shall, shall fear no evil, evil for you are with, with me. Your rod and your staff, your staff they, they comfort, comfort me. me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely, Surely goodness and, and mercy shall follow me all the all days, days of my life, life and, and I will dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. forever. And together, let us pray the prayer of the day printed in your bulletins. O Lord Christ, good, good shepherd, shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We do continue with our lessons uh, this morning. lesson is from Acts chapter 4. The next day the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there and so was, were Capus, John Alexander, and others in the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people. If we are being called to account today for, the, for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the story you built. Jesus is the stone you build is rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. The second lesson is from 1 John chapter 3. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at, at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask. Because we keep his commands and do what pleases him, and this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. God of love. Word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hard hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. 
Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he, he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The words that we hear this morning from Jesus echoes words of the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament. Long before Jesus' time, God, through Ezekiel, speaks similar words, which are words of promise to God's people. At a time when God's people were asking themselves, where is God? Where is God in my life? as they were going through a tragedy. They were under exile by the Babylonians, their temple destroyed, they felt abandoned, unable to see a way to, to renew their relationship with their God. Well, they had trusted their shepherds, their leader, earthly leaders, and these leaders in their pursuing of earthly powers caused these, their sheep, the people, to be scattered. So Ezekiel also reminds these shepherds that they did not care for their people before this happened. The ruling class fed themselves with richness, creating a big gap with the rest of the people, creating a poor class. And these shepherds began to not care for their people and to focus on wanting to be a worldly power, the next worldly power, among other powers like Egypt and Assyria and Babylon. Well, this did not end well for them. And most of the ruling power were removed from the land and taken into captivity by Babylon. And so only the poor remain in the land. And so while they were in exile, they scattered, God speak these words through the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flock when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered, on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabitant parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lay down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lay down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the stray, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy, I will feed them with justice. So here God refers to himself as the true shepherd, calling God's people to trust in God despite their strategy and to move forward with God as they look into the future. And so Jesus speaks the words that we read in the Gospel of John 
in the context of the temple, many years later, when it was rebuilt, and Jesus here confronts the religious authorities who at the time served as gatekeepers of this temple. These temple leaders or these temple shepherds were the ones who decided who was welcome into the temple, who was not welcome into the temple, and oftentimes excluded the poor. Oftentimes they excluded those outside of their own cultural and ethnic heritage. But they also were oblivious to the need outside of their own flock. So the door in which people enter, the door in, that these leaders have created for people to enter the house of God was very selective, a very, a very narrow way and a very narrow door. So Jesus was, when he was speaking these words that we read today in the Gospel of John, was referring to these gatekeepers of the house of God at those higher hands who did not care as God cared and pointed himself as a good shepherd who was willing to lay down his life for them instead of running away to protect his own life or rather to give his life away for the sake of this sheep. And even for those who were not part of this family sheep, So in a way, Jesus was speaking to the church of his time, whom he considered that they were not caring for others. So Jesus does point to himself as the, as the good shepherd, as God refers himself in the words of Ezekiel as the good shepherd. And Jesus even later will point to himself as the temple. Many historians describe the group of people that Jesus often confronted, like this group. They said that this group ceased to exist until there was no physical temple to gather. So they invested so much until it was destroyed. It was destroyed in the year 70, years after Jesus ascended to the Father. But by this time, there were already Christians, believers. There were places of worship. And people gathered in these places of worship. And these different groups were growing. So today we read in our second reading a letter to one of these communities of faith that were already functioning as a church. First John is a letter to, to, that, to one of those communities. And... In reading uh, just more of that background, the church reformer Martin Luther, in his commentary on this letter, tells us that at the time that there, there was a group of people called the Centurions, and this group of people denied the divinity of Christ, and he tells that there was another group called, or he named, Sluggish Christians. In this group, he describes they thought they have heard Christ's word enough and that it was not necessary to forsake the world and to do good to their neighbors. So this group, if you can imagine, who was functioning as the church, the body of Christ, was saying, we know all about Jesus. We are saved. We are ready for Jesus to come back. We believe we don't have anything, we don't have to do anything else, we don't need to help anybody. That's basically what they were saying. So they began to do what the shepherds that Jesus spoke to, they began to fall into that behavior of the leaders of these shepherds that Ezekiel speaks to. They began to ignore the needs of their neighbors and become oblivious to the needs of others as well. And so these apostles 
writes a letter of exhortation. Sometimes we need exhortation. So he wrote this letter. And in this process of exhortation, people are reminded what they have forgotten, the foundational Christian teachings. They forgot Christ called for them to be a servant to others. And so John reminds them of that night in which Jesus took his outer robe, put it aside, and washed his disciples' feet, laying aside all pride, all glory, or all earthly riches for the sake of others. And it is in that very night that Jesus commands his disciples to love one another as he has shown them. So the apostles, John reminds them of Christ's sacrificial love for the humanity of, at the cross, where he indeed laid down his life for the whole world, just as the good shepherd described in the Gospel of John. Jesus was this shepherd who opened the narrow door of salvation to all people. He opened the gate doors of the temple to the whole world, rather than a selective group of people. So the invitation this morning of this text to us today let this text remind us that God is the true shepherd of our lives, who calls us today to trust in God despite the perhaps sad or tragedy, the difficulty that perhaps we are going through. And as a church, God in Christ continues to cause us to be a welcoming church, a church which doors are wide open to receive all people, regardless of their economic, social, and ethnic background, all are welcome. God continues to call us to serve the one in need, whoever that person may be. So my prayer today is that all that we encounter all the people this week that we may interact with, that they, our neighbors, all feel the loving care of our good shepherd, our Lord, the resurrected Christ. Amen. Oh, mm -hmm.
I will invite you to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our offering Him, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Let us pray. God of love, you call those beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue with our prayers, and I will invite you to respond. Um, With your mercy is great after each petition, and I will invite you to lift also your own prayers at this time. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in a steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive, expansive love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Shepherd, you are generous with the gift of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hope given, shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucified any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. 
Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Saving shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith in the midst of challenges and opportunities. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our announcements. Uh, just that uh, we will be sending out soon our newsletter uh, through email, but also we will mail that. And so I will invite you to take a look at uh, next month. Uh, there will be special Sundays. Uh, Pentecost Sunday is also next month. And so, uh, so there is uh, a lot of things happening next month. And so I will just invite you to, to look, take a look and then I don't know if, Steve, you had anything else uh, from the council side at this time, or? That'll be next Next, next week, week. okay. Yeah. So next week we will have a lot, <laughs> a lot happening, and so we don't wanna overwhelm you yet. <laughs> but, uh, well, with that, uh, have a blessed week. Good to see you all, and we will see you next Sunday at 9 a.m. I will invite you as you are able uh, to stand to receive these blessings, and then from there we will, we will sing, Savior, like the, a shepherd, lead us. <clears throat> May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Peace, share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.